Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? Steve here for Paintings of Steve Brown. I am doing something a little different on this video. I'm just going to let it run and talk to everybody about magic and EDH and especially altering magic cards while I alter a magic card. I figured that's something nice to look at, or maybe not nice to look at. But I know for me, I've been watching a lot of art tutorials and kind of like people talking over gameplay of magic or something like that. So I thought to put out my own content like that. I actually just deleted uh, TikTok off my phone because I did that for two weeks. And that app is absolute, absolutely like the dregs of, of humanity. It really is not good for any human being to consume any of that. I normally just like opened, uh, opened TikTok, posted, you know, copy and pasted everything in of my uh, of my paintings, and then shut it right off because that was a weird app for sure. I won't get into it. <laughs> it's not kid friendly that app or the things I want to say about it. So right now I have a wet palette. This is I have a sponge, like a thin sponge that I cut out into this shape. This is just like a plastic, uh, like Tupperware top. Um, so you want plastic. I have a, a sponge underneath that that I wet with water, kind of just make sure it's damp. And then I put an old t-shirt over that to kind of give it just a little extra uh, thing. The whole thing gets damp. Not soaked, just damp. Damp is the key word here. And then I took parchment paper, which uh, you just get on Amazon for four bucks. And you cut out your little square and you place it on, and that gives this palette now, the water seeps through very, very slowly, and it will help you blend, help make sure your um, your paints don't dry out, which is the most annoying. Um, a lot of times, people, when you see like a an altar that doesn't look smooth, and, uh, and, and you know, like an art extension, you can totally see where the, where the paint started and ended. It's mostly because they used like a globby um, paint that was not very good to use. And they let it dry out just a little bit, but they said, ah, I can still use it. I've been guilty of doing that myself. But with this wet palette, it's a little easier. Let's get a toothpick. I just have these normal tiny toothpicks. Uh, I used to buy these really big ones, but I could do the same thing with the small ones, and they're way cheaper to get the small ones versus these gigantic, like, cocktail skewers. So, my Arcane Signet is taped down. I, uh, I just take normal scotch tape, and I make sure I'm taking all the way around it so I don't get paint underneath the card. Make sure it's down real nice. I'm going to prime it with a clear texture gesso. Um, literally one bottle of this clear texture gesso I think will probably last you for a thousand cards. You'll see how little I use out of this. So I just take a, a normal round brush, a little bigger than I normally use for anything else. It's got like a square tip. I'm just using the cap of whatever is in there and I'm putting the lightest amount on there. So it comes out white, but as you brush it on correctly, if it's on there correctly, it gives it a little bit of a grit, like it gives it a little bit of a texture, so you don't want it to be too thick, because even if I put paint on it, you can kind of see the texture, but you see how little I'm using on it, and as you like paint it in there, and paint it on and let it dry, it'll dry clear, so that's when you're watching any of my videos that it's, you know, you're like, oh, he doesn't use a, a, a primer or anything. Uh, for dark cards, I definitely don't use a primer. If a card needs a lot of yellows and oranges and pinks as the background, just like a flat orange as the background, I will first prime it with some uh, just gray paint, really, really thin uh, layer of gray paint, and that normally helps everything stick. Um, I'm using Golden Heavy. Uh, I've seen a lot of talk about... Uh, the fluids. I might switch over and try a couple colors of fluids. I'm using a new purple on this. 
I just bought their uh, Ultramarine Violet. I don't really like this purple. Like, it just doesn't fit. Like, Magic cards have certain colors that are... Like, they kind of go with a lot. Like, this, like, ochre... What do they actually call it? Yeah, yellow, yellow oxide. This color is used a lot in a lot of Magic cards. Um, so, like, I get a lot of use out of that. So I want a good purple, and this is just... I don't know. It's, it's not the right shade. I gotta, like, manipulate a lot. Alright. Let's get into it. Everything should be nice and dry. So... Let's work with the purple anyway. Even though I don't think it's gonna come out the most wonderful, and I, I'm gonna need to mess around with it really, really bad. Oh, I didn't get gray. But we'll see if it blends nicely. Yeah, it's still a little dark. So, we're just gonna paint our bottom layer. Um, it's awesome about painting versus tattooing or drawing with pens or something. It's very easy. And if you make a mistake, as you can see, I'm already making a mistake, that you can fix it easily. So, to be honest, I haven't done a, I've done a couple in this set. Some magic cards have a different, um, like, printing process, I'm assuming, is what does it. Like, a different printer. So there's, like, Japanese printers, there's Belgian printers. I believe there could be some American printers. And uh, all the cards are actually different uh, waxiness on the front. So, like, uh, Throne of Eldraine, which is a set of magic cards uh, that came out what, earlier this, this year, I believe. I think it was earlier this year. It came out this year, and they're so waxy. They're, like, unbelievable. Like, maybe it's just the batch I'm getting, but it's it, an incredibly waxy set. All right, I got my gray. My, my paints are off to the side. It's a really waxy set, and it's really, like... You have to like prime it really good, and you're, you have to go over it with your colors like three times. But this is the commander set, so this, it seems to be a little better. I, don't know. I could just be telling myself that on my first pass. We'll find out in the end that it wasn't better at all. Everything sucks. But normally, when I do arcane signets, they're from that set, and uh, yeah, they're just crazy waxy. So. You guys want to talk about? Do you know that uh, I play a good amount of magic? And sometimes I see my cards out. Oh, yeah, look at that. Buttery. That's a real good tone right there. So sometimes I play on, uh, uh, what's the, play EDH um, Discord. Uh, haven't lately. I got really into it for a couple weeks, like in the beginning of the pandemic. I've been slowly trying to not play as much because, you know, I'm trying to take life a little bit more serious than just playing video games all day long. But sometimes I see my cards, people play it. Some guy has a Derevi deck in CDH. I play CDH and like really high powered, uh, really high powered EDH. So, like, I play like a tabernacle in my lands deck and, you know, stuff to brag about that way. Um, so I'm playing CDH, some guy's playing Derevi, and uh, his general is one of mine. As I can tell, you know, I, I do something to a Derevi card that uh, other artists don't. And I, you know, sometimes when I don't know how to paint a card, I just look up, I just put in, you know, like, Arcane Signet Altered MTG into Google and see what shows up. Mostly it's just local pro art, art uh, local pro, but I won't get into that. Um, but I normally, I see what they're doing, and either I want to take parts of what they're doing and think that I can do it better, or, you know, throw some more, I'm, I like using a million different colors in my altars, you know. Uh, those who will not be named altered artists normally just, like, put a black background and you know, I'm starting to get a lot better at not just blacking out the background. Um, or, you know, like the bottom area. So, I see it from on the, on camera. I see this Derevi. And I was like, hey. And he goes, what? And I'm like, that's my Derevi. He's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> He's like, no, this is 
this is my magic card I'm playing with now. Like, you know, it's like I'm super drunk. Ooh, look at that good line. That was a good line. So I've been not taping off my edges, and it's made me a way better painter. And plus, I mean, if I go over the lines, like you see, like you see right here, you take a um, wet toothpick and you can just erase it. <laughs> I use my fingers a lot um, to kind of smudge or kind of take something off and make it look a little better. And I have this like really, really short bristled um, paintbrush. It's got a tiny little, little afro on the end of it. And this is literally, I just take it and I just kind of get, I get it super wet and I get a little aggressive to kind of clear up any smudges or lines or anything that gets into um, the art that I don't want to be painting. So those are my ways of getting rid of it. So uh, I've seen some comments like, oh, you should use masking tape or painter's tape to make sure you can't get in those little lines. And I know those people have never altered a card before because it's painstakingly, it takes so long to mask things up. And uh, admittedly, I'm not at the level where my cards take, or I, I don't charge, I'm, I'm gonna say this in the nicest way, and I'm, I'm sure as a human being you can understand what I'm saying. I don't charge enough. Um, I try not to charge enough because I want my cards to be affordable, but I don't charge enough to spend five hours on a painting. On a, on a magic card. You know, my altar started at $30. If someone gives me $30, I'm not spending five hours on a card. And I really don't see, I don't see the, so like there's certain artists that everything is super crisp and super done, but they're only using just arcane signal. They're not using the text, do, the text box, they're just using the top, like MIB or Klug, uh, you know, like these people are, are just using the text box so yeah they, they they're gonna mask off this really well but for me to mask off this and then mask off this little bubble <laughs> sorry and then this square and then take it off and I'm gonna have to go in and, and like mess around with it anyway so for me I don't mask it off uh, I made a template when I was first starting uh, and that was just annoying as shit to get the template to you know be reusable you know I was thinking okay I'll just make something that's reusable and that was not easy. Um, so, I just go real careful. I'm getting real good lately about not going too much into it. This top line here on the text box is my hardest line. What's good about this painting is you'll see at the very end, this painting I get real, like, this blue just like starts shooting out everywhere. I'm actually going to try to do a different version of this, and hopefully the client will be cool with it, because I just, I'm not going to tell them that I'm doing a different version. <laughs> I, I do that sometimes. Uh, you know, people will pay me for an arcing signet that they see on the internet. You know, I'm, I'm one that I've done in the past. Like, I've done arcing signets for a year now. And they go, oh yeah, I want this exact one. And I go, great. And uh, the stipulation always is like, okay, you're paying for something that's going to be 95% of the way that exact thing, you know? So, I'm an artist, this is a painting, I'm not a machine, I'm not, you know, I mean like, dude, if you want to print off I want a bunch of my altars and then like, you know, put them in sleeves, that's fine. But if you want a hand-drawn, a hand-painted thing, normally I'm like, you know... Your, your card's going to be 95% to the, to the image that you are requesting. So this one's probably going to be about 90%, but I don't think I'll have any problems. Everyone normally is pretty cool. I answer every question that people have real high touch, uh, which means that, like when I answer an email, uh, I actually need to start doing a lot more stock emails, but... I am not doing stock emails, I am. Every customer is a friend, and I talk to them, you know, in complete sentences, and I bounce ideas back and forth for just 30 bucks, you know? I mean, granted, yes, I'm, I'm trying to get people to do multiple cards so that I can make 60 bucks or $100 in a, in a transaction, but 
Uh, normally it's for 30 bucks to get your, uh, what's the next one I got going? This is my next one I'm going to do, I'm going to do a cool blue back. But, like, 30 bucks, I am, like, I am all ears, like, sending me ideas, you know, he's like, oh, I really like, I've done a, I've done a MEL for the guy, and for the Brubeck, uh, customer, he's like, get crazy, like, make his hat all nuts, like, put scrolls everywhere, this is gonna be really fun, like, put scrolls everywhere, so he's holding, like, a big scroll, throw the scrolls around, so I'm gonna, like, you know, for, I mean, I'm not trying to, com I'm not complaining about money, I think $30 for an altar is a perfect amount for everybody, it's not too little for me, and it's not too much for everybody else, you know, I think it's a really good middle ground, but for $30, I'm gonna have a little fun, you know what I mean, if someone, I mean, I haven't, I haven't been requested to uh, do another altruist work, but if someone wants me to literally just uh, be a little printer, and they're like, I want this exact card printed out, I think I might charge a little more, who knows. Having a little, I don't know how many people have tattoos that are listening right now, but when you go to an artist who's putting art on your body for the rest of your life, you always give them a little bit, or a lot of it. Ooh, that purple is buttery, look at that, that went in perfect, got some nice shadowing. I'm sorry I talked shit about you, purple. I'm sorry I started this video literally just talking shit about how how I don't have faith in the purple that <laughs> I have here. Oh, it's drying and it's not going in as buttery as I thought it would. Um, but yeah, if you get a tattoo, you know, you give them a general idea. You don't just take something off of Pinterest and say, put this on my body. I, I really, I think that that is insulting to the artist and I also think you're not going to get the passion of a good tattoo and a good, and a happy tattoo artist. And, I definitely have more than a few tattoos, and at this point, I literally just come in with like a sentence and just let them go, because I've done so much research on the artist, uh, you know, I know what they're capable of, I know what they're comfortable with, and I'm going to them for a reason, and I'd like to think that there's part of that for someone who gets one of my paintings, because I do think of them as little micro paintings, and I really think it's a, uh, it's a hack um, in the art world to be so versed in magic and be able to talk the lingo and be, I mean, I love magic to be the only game I play. I don't, I don't, play, I don't play video games. I don't do anything. I play magic. So because I love magic so much, it's very easy for me to talk the lingo and, and want to give someone something cool. And as an artist, I was actually just talking to a bunch of artists uh, last night and the struggles of making art in COVID times and the, you know, uncertainty of uh, events, you know, in COVID times. And man, it's, uh, it's tough for an artist to sell a painting for $30 and mail it across the world, no questions asked. It's extremely hard. I've seen, um, I've seen a lot of friends of mine, uh, that I used to work at a bar with, she quit the, quit, you know, the bar life to become a full-time artist, and she is elated when she sells a painting for 30 bucks. So for your altruist, like me, who in COVID times, you know, I'm not serving drinks, I'm not bartending, I'm not doing any of that, and I think a lot of altruists are, and a lot of artists in general, their side hustle, Coming, their main hustle. So that's 100% me. So anytime that you're buying uh, handmade art in general, I think that giving the artist a lot of freedom and knowing that they are extremely grateful to sell art in any way they can and I think I count myself as a very very lucky artist because it just so happens that my favorite hobby in the whole wide world can also become a vehicle for art which you can't say that to a lot of people you know 
Not unless you get real, real big and they put your, you know, art on a Paps can. So I am extremely happy being a altruist. And um, I think that's reflected in uh, how much how much uh, content I put out into the world. Because I want to, every day, fill this nerd space with my, my, uh, wrong color, um, with my painting. You know what I've been always really good at? Like, there's, there's a million things I think I'm bad at as an art, as a painter, but I've been always really good at blending. I am, you give me a color and you say blend that thing, I am down to get down. I blend like a fucking madman, and I think that's a huge, um, I think that's a huge part of uh, altering is making sure that you blend really, really well and you match the color that you blend. Obviously, I'm not perfect, and you know what, I've never seen a perfect alterist, but try to blend the colors all nice. Yeah, I like that. It's got a little, like, pop of purple there. I actually think that works really well. Okay. So, we have a background that I did about two passes all over the place. I got to do a couple passes here, and a couple passes over there, but other than that, uh, oops, jeez, I keep on thinking that this, that spot, can you guys still see my palette? I keep on thinking this spot is this spot, and I'm putting in the lighter, the lighter dark purple instead of the darker dark purple. So, now that we have this nice... Blend it up and blend it out. Now you can start putting in these little pebbles. Start doing this hand, like the extension of the hand. I've I never extend these fingers out. I think it kind of looks weird to have like the hand, just like a straight fucking hand on the table when you're playing it. Oh, I swore. I don't know if I could swear in YouTube. But I'm not gonna extend these. I'm not going to give more. I mean I could, but no, I'm not gonna do more fingers that's that's doing too much for the um for the customer who bought this not wanting fingers extended so a lot of times too like i have i've practiced and i did one you know arcane signet for myself so i have an arcane signet as like a proof of concept i can you know mess up my own card I have that in one of my decks, so if I go like real extreme on one card, sometimes I take out the card from my deck and I just sell that off to the art, to the uh, customer. Because um, normally the one that I have in my desk that I or in my uh, in my deck that I already did, normally that's the one I use as a picture, you know, for like a reference. Like, oh, do you like this? And I go, yeah, I like that. So they're normally getting exactly what's on the internet versus me repainting it. But I don't mind repainting. Do not mind. I always go way too dark on the bottom of the hand here. I like always see myself do it and then I have to redo it and I know I'm gonna do it right now. Watch. Oh no, that's perfect. <laughs> I didn't have faith. I didn't have faith. And then I gotta go real dark on the very top. Um, altering also has really made me a way better artist. Um, Ooh, look at that hand. I mean, oh, the, the light makes it look really shitty, but I, I did. I pulled a really nice black there. Um, the, um, my original paintings, the, you know, paintings that I do, um, one, two, three, 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 uh, the paintings that I do personally have all benefited from me being an altruist and figuring out figuring out a lot of like color studies and why does this do that Ooh, bloody look I don't know you can't this is like one part where the glare is on the camera isn't it yeah you can't see how well I'm blending this but <laughs> let me tell you it looks cool um yeah also I'm just a huge fanboy for like Rebecca Gway and I mean, there's a million people that I'm a fanboy for in the Magic uh, community. I'm actually uh, trying to collect all of Therese Nielsen's uh, cards. So 
I'm trying to get one of every Therese Nielsen card. I'm doing it real slowly. I'm doing it through trades, and I'm trying to get it them for cheap. It's going well so far. It's going to be too dark. So what I do is I have a play mat underneath this. This is just a black piece of construction paper. You can get, you know, like 50 pieces of construction paper for like a buck and a half on uh, Amazon. And I'm just using this to test my colors. You can also actually like paint onto the card and then wipe it off if you, you know, if you have confidence in wiping it off not into the paint. You wipe it off onto actual magic card. Um, you can normally get it all off there. I'd recommend just doing it on paper next week, but, um, and then I can just kind of test, 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 do right, but I don't care. Actually, I do care. You know what a lot of colors need? So you take a color and you're like, oh, that doesn't look right right out of the tube, and the only thing it really needs sometimes is a little bit of white and a little bit of black to, like, kind of, like, bring it up and then bring it down, and it kind of just dulls everything, which, if you look at a magic card... There is, I mean, there's obviously exceptions. There is sometimes really, really, like there's not a lot of super duper, um, like high contrast, really bright and vivid colors. Uh, they are pretty muted, a lot of it. So you take, uh, you know, this crazy ochre here, uh, what do they call it, yellow, ox yellow oxide, and I just, threw it down with some brown, some Mars brown, so it's like a reddish brown, and then just put a bunch of gray and black into it, and it came out exactly how I want it, which is awesome. Um, well, I do. Normally, I mean, for the, for the video, it's a lot better if I do it. So, I want that to dry. I feel good. I want it to feel good, be in there, and feel like I'm moving on with the card. I want it just to have these little stone. What I normally do is I kind of put like a rough idea of what I want the colors and the shapes to be in close to what I think the color would be, and then let that dry, like kind of go around the painting, do other things, let it dry, and then go back in and like really fine tune that color. So I do need a little bit of that color just mixed with purple. Cause just like, it's like you know, if you're watching all the way up to now, know that I love you. Because you black. Um because I mean I just throw my headphones on and listen to a ton of artists talk. Magic people talk about magic cards and decks that they're using and making and like I don't even play modern. I used to play modern a lot. And I still listen to people talk about modern. I mean, if I were playing modern now, I'd play like the Char Belcher deck or something. Or what's there's a oh, there's another deck that looked really cool. It's like a, a Leon and Arbiter deck with nine lives. So they like they try to like death and taxes you out. So like you can't really play a lot of cards and they play nine lives and you like can't kill them. <laughs> really stupid. And they just beat you to death with, like, Thalia's and shit. Um, and then Charbelcher got really good with the, uh, with the new modal lands, where sometimes the, uh, the card is a land, and sometimes, like, a sorcery or a creature or something. So that made, like, the Charbelcher decks just, like, true Charbelcher decks, and you don't have to run one Taiga. You can actually run zero lands, which is pretty nuts. I might make it an EDH, who knows. Right now, I'm just playing a ton of EDH, and you know what? Why I started Carpet of Remoras, because I really didn't think that there was good content for high-powered EDH. There's some CDH people out there, but they do a lot of, like, um, a lot of gameplay, and, like, I don't know. There, there's, I have my favorites, I don't have my favorites. Uh, but the the through line normally is that it's you know they're they're trying to play paper uh, as a what am I to say? as a uh, gameplay uh, channel and I just want someone to like hey these are the ten spiciest fucking EDH cards 
out there. This is how you use them. And these are the 10 decks that are super cool with it. And, like, have, have a uh, channel that just gets your juices flowing for deck building. Because that has really been, as a little kid, my favorite part of Magic. Now, as an adult, deck building is still... It's definitely one of my favorite parts. Playing now is a lot better because as you get older, you have less friends. <laughs> and uh, having a way, having a game to play with those friends, I think this is more cyan than anything else. Having a game to play with your friends means a lot. Let me think. So this is, uh, I've been starting to get a couple new colors in golden. I don't think I've actually used this blue yet. I might need to cut it with some green. Eh, I might actually be right on the money. We're all on the money. Oh yeah, it's actually. Yeah, I think that's probably good. So because I've done this card a million times, I'm just getting like silly with it. And just putting pen to paper right away. You know what I mean? Brush the card. But if you haven't done a card before, and you're doing like a new card, a new card for you, I would suggest testing some colors off to the side. You know, um, if you're newer, altering. Just having a basic land off to the side and trying to test you know, blending would be really good. Yeah, so I started this YouTube channel. If you look way in the back of my YouTube videos, I used to just do, um, I tried to like do a podcast for a, for a month. And I could see doing it. I'm... I'm smart enough to understand how to make a podcast and how to and what people want, how to make it good, you know? Look at that, you just flick it right off. Go, I don't want this on this card anymore. Love it. Um, and, you know, if I'd stuck with it, I'm sure I could have made it something. But, it became a choice between do I want to do alters or do I want to be a talking head on YouTube? You know, because I can only promote so much. That's kind of like where I was. I was like, well, I can promote this shit out of myself for one thing and one thing only. You know, I can't, I really don't want to, I can, I just don't want to do both, you know? I'll go over this text box. Okay. Uh, so I chose altering. Uh, altering actually made me money right away, you know? Versus, uh, I mean, I was practicing a lot on my cards and making no money, but. Oh, shit. Well, I ruined that. If you guys are looking at this, I had a blue and white working really, really well. And then there's a heart in the white here. I got a little, little crazy. Put some ochre in there. So let's start another one. All right. So this has no rhyme or reason. I'm just kind of putting little flags in here. Um, I've always really liked like a baby blue. It's been one of my favorite colors to paint with. So I don't know why I picked baby blue when I first did it. And did this card way back in the day. Jeez, did I do it again? Son of a! There's like ochre everywhere. Ah, you can't see it. You can't see it in the pigment. But it was my go-to for like a year. I would do so many blue paintings, blue things, because, I don't know, it's, as a kid, I never really got into blue. I was red, green, and those were the coolest. All my friends like blue. They're like, blue is the best color. What's wrong with you? Like, blue sucks. Blue's so warm. And you know what? Something clicked inside me where I'm just like, man, like electric blue. Like, what am I doing now? Super cool. So I just got really into like the baby blue electric blue. And that was the color I wanted. Huh. I mean, I could probably do like a Booberg thing. Oh, yeah, so anyway. Um, yeah, the channel. I have four podcasts up. And if this 
has a good amount of views or pretty much I'm looking for like watch time. If a few people watch this all the way through or 30 minutes in, you know, and then shut it off, like I'm not I'm not offended. This is like who knows if this is a good upload or good content or whatever. But um as long as I'm getting a little bit of like further engagement and someone's watching this up to this point where we got 35 up to this point uh that's perfect that's all i want i just want a little bit more of a platform to just talk about that. so anyway if you made it to this point please please comment message me uh, can you message on youtube please hit me up and tell me what you liked what you didn't like and the next one will be way more catered to those people it's like I'm not doing anything that's using my body or my brain too much right now. Uh, I'm going to use these um, because, you know, for every new card that I alter, I probably alter two or three old cards that people just want me to, you know, do my old versions of because they, you know, this is the coolest arcade signet I've ever seen. So, people are, you know, I, I have... Urzas and get rock monsters to do this week, you know, which I've already done before. So I don't turn the camera on and I don't do anything. I just listen to a podcast, or music. I just downloaded The Boys. I'm gonna start watching that. Heard really good things about that show. Um, you know, so why not just do this and put out more content? Because you know what? I think I'm. I think I like YouTube as a to be a content creator for YouTube. I think I like it probably the most, um, you know, Instagram's super cool, I've really found a good community there, ooh, I just fucking destroyed my dark purple, it is gone, um, so, you know, I'm gonna put out some content like this, and if this gets three views, and no one watched up to this point, then this will be the last one. But if this gets just a few more views than three, there's a purple in there. I need to work out what this purple is. Is this, this is like a, yeah, that's a perfect amount of purple. Tiny bits of purple. Little bit of purple. So, I just, I just want to pump up this channel to have the short videos short videos of me painting new cards that I normally have on, you know, uh, really make that look a little brighter. But yeah. Um, do short videos, uh, and then do longer videos and see how it goes, because this is, the internet right now is pretty free. To pay a .com to reach a lot of people. I don't think it's going to last very long. Definitely have to get a .com soon to reach more people. But at the moment, all of the ways to reach people are free. Anyway, no rambling. So, if you reach this point, you probably like hearing me talk. So, I'm just going to talk about like EDH and cool stuff. If I still had a uh, podcast... I would be talking about the leaks that were happening for uh, for Commander Legends. I picked my, I did top twos, which I thought were really good. Uh, my two favorite cards of um, what was the last set? Zendikar and my top two favorite uh, generals of Zendikar and like how to use them and like what I envisioned that those decks would be. So my top two generals. Hmm. Oh, it's going to be the boar, that uh, green and white boar. I painted him. I normally paint my favorite ones. You know, I pick the, pick the ones I really like and I paint them. Oh, it's Yasharn, that little boar god. He's, it, the art is also unbelievable. Was it done by like G-Ghost or something? Or Ghost or something? Um, super amazing. Uh, that card is a stacks, uh, like, powerhouse and you know what if you have a green white deck that is only made to make other people miserable the deck's good 
Um, I mean, is it better than Sise or, you know, um, what's the other one that's really good? Uh, Silvala, the, the, um, so dark in there? Uh, light. No, I need to uh, Sise, the, uh, the, the green white one. Not Sise, what is it? Sol Silvala, the green white one. Um, is it better than them? Maybe. Um, there's an element of surprise to EDH, which is really cool, you know? Um, I have a Calabax deck, and everyone goes, oh, a Calabax deck, I know exactly what you're going to do. And I go, oh, do you? And they go, yes, you're going to cast Fork, and I'm like, I have no Forks in here. And they're like, what? I say, what? Gets them every time. So they're, like, waiting for me to, I mean, yes, I'm instant heavy, but they're waiting on instants, and they're killing my Calamax over and over again, and my whole deck literally does not revolve around Calamax. It's a Valakut deck. It's a lands deck. So, like, my general is only there to block if I'm getting my ass kicked. Or, if I have a handful of instants and a way to tap him, my hand just becomes infinitely better. And so I play Calamags, and people go nuts and try to kill him, and I let him die. And I'm like, okay, you just emptied your hand. My turn? Cool. Put three mountains into play. I have two Valakuts, you know, and I'm way ahead of the game. So... The element of surprise when you're running that boar, uh, Yasharn, I think is, is a great way to play stacks. And also, he is just a beast by himself. Because he goes in all those other stack stacks anyway. So anyway, I think he's really good. And I think the best one is Omnath. I'm, uh, I'm biased because I made a Omnath Locus of Creation CEDH deck uh, that wins, wins through Dockside, Lord Dracus lines, uh, MEL, and Dockside lines, uh, and then... Uh, Breach. So I do Underworld Breach, Lion's Eye Diamond, and uh, like uh, Intuition type of deal. Uh, lots of wheels, uh, Smothering Ties, stuff like that. So it's like a really good mid-range value engine. Because, uh, I mean, Omnath is a value engine. That's what they should just print value engine on him. But the deck obviously does not need him to win. However, if you're just drawing a bunch of BS, you know, you're just drawing a bunch of counter spells. And you have a bunch of mana, the deck runs 30 lands. I run all 10 fetches, so it kind of helps it out, but sometimes you hit a pocket of lands. Um, that you just drop an Omnath, and he is just, he is ready to value you all the way into where you need to go. Well, I think that this is a nice little Arcane Signet. Where are we at? 42. Perfect. So I'm just going in, filling in the parts that I messed around with. I'm not going too crazy on the blues and the whites. I kind of like it being nice and feathery and kind of just like all over the place. Uh, keeping some things balanced. Um, you can see how I could put this little like finger over, but you know, whatever. But ever. So Omnath and Yasharn are my top two favorites. I think Omnath is not a general centric deck. You know, uh, if you want to play Landfall Omnath, that's fine. But, like, he comes in, draws you a card. Um, there's a, a... You play a lot of bounce spells in the deck. So you can bounce them back to your hand if they're trying to kill it. That gets rid of one of their kill spells. Then you can play it again, draw a card. Like, he's really, really good. MEL turns him into, like, a Thrasios. Um, obviously, more Dracus and... Uh, and Dockside and a bounce spell means you have infinite mana and an infinite, uh, you know, draws with Omnath. There's actually, oh, I forgot to tell you the my favorite way to win with Omnath because it's Omnath centric. Once you get infinite mana and you get to draw, you draw all the way till you get to, uh, oh jeez, what the heck's the name? Uh, oh Jesus Christ. Uh, something Silk Spinner. Oh, Oh, now I'm flaking out. It's the green one. It's a green enchantment creature. All enchantments and creatures are uh, un uh, uncounterable. She's in there just because, like, you drop her, everyone goes, oh, shit. And then, like, you're not comboing out, but you are dropping, you know, like, a Rhystic study that can't be countered, and you're, like, really ahead. Um, or, I mean, obviously, all my com most of my combos are enchantment and creature-based. But anyway, um, so you draw with infinite mana, and you can blink infinite times Omnath or any creature with like M.E.L. or more dragons and you have uh, 
the oh man, that green creature that animates a land for four mana. You animate a land, you bounce the land to get a landfall trigger that way, and then you bounce Omnop to reset him. So you can still kill people with Omnop's uh, landfall ability. Granted, I'm playing Omnop at the very top level, um, and there is, I mean, he just might not be better than Thrasio, uh, Bruce Tall, but I think he's really fun. Uh, I think that Thrasios hits the board, and then you you have to build a Thrasio stack, you know what I mean? Uh, and with, you know, I don't want, I played Thrasios for a while, I don't want to play a Thrasios deck. So, I built, uh, I built Omnom, and I absolutely love him. I am now in the process of foiling out the deck, and making the deck fully real. Uh, if anyone's got a Time Twister to donate, please do. Okay, Arcane Signet is done. We're going to sign this. Um, we're going to sign this in this ochre color. I think that would look the coolest. Just kind of keep it in the same color centric. Nice. Never know what kind of mustache you're going to get. And then my two favorite cards of... Zendikar. Woo! That's a good mustache. I don't know. I didn't do my research on my two favorite cards, but those are my two favorite legendaries. Alright, so listen is done. We're gonna go... Uh, I have a uh, flat, clear spray. Try to get the uh, camera to see how good I did that arm. See that thing? Um, I'm gonna flat, clear spray it and uh, send it off. Thank you so much to whoever is listening to this right now, uh, this YouTube channel. Um, you know, I'm in a self-promoting year. I need to self-promote as hard as possible without coming off pretentious and egotistical. So that is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, I just, I started and ended TikTok. Fuck TikTok. But, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get into all the lanes. I'm getting into, you know, getting all the Instagram and getting into YouTube. So the fact that you're listening this far, if anyone is, uh, thank you so much. I really, really want to hear from you, the person that has made it this far. Uh, please comment below uh, or email me. My email is uh, should be in the description here. And tell me what you liked about this, what you didn't like, what I could do better. And uh, you know, we'll talk then. And uh, I will make this channel way better. It's something that you can look forward to listening to. And I mean, this was an easy 50 minutes for me because I had to do this work anyway. Uh, uploading and editing uh, is really not going to be a thing. I might just like play really, really quiet music behind this. You know, just like pick an album and play an album. So this is all really easy for me, and I can do a bunch of these. I can do a couple of them a week. Um, so please let me know what you liked, what you didn't like about this process, and I will listen and I will make it exactly what is going to get me more people to tell me what they like and don't like and then there'll be so many people telling me what they like and don't like that I will have the perfect YouTube channel thank you so much for watching have a fulfilling day stay very safe out there